Good afternoon, everyone. It's time for Connecting with Kim. Whether you've lived in this community for years or just moved in last month, Connecting with Kim will bring you resources and information to help you live your best life here in Sun City Center. Here's your host, Kim Drogi, with this week's Connecting with Kim. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Connecting with Kim. I'm your host, Kim Drogi. We have another great show for you, and let me introduce my guest in the chair. His name is Rick Swenson, and he is the president of Pelican Players, located right here in Sun City Center. Welcome, Rick, to Connecting with Kim. Thank you, Kim, for having me. I appreciate this. It's my pleasure. So as everyone who listens to the show knows, I always give my guests the first couple of minutes to sort of share their life journey with our listeners. So why don't you take a few minutes and let us get to know you? Well, thank you very kindly. I will tell you that we moved here to Sun City Center back in 2010. We came from Pennsylvania, but I'm originally from Iowa, and my bride, Alexis, is originally from New Jersey, and we met via college friends. We moved down here, as I said, in 2010. In 2013, we became involved with Pelican Players. I went to college and had my degree in theater and did theater a lot in my younger years. And then came real life when I had to work for a living and it was not in theater. So when we came here, I decided let's get back involved with theater. And we realized that there was quite the group in Sun City Center, Kings Point, that uh, was putting on main stage shows and a couple of other things. Pelican Players was originated back in 1981, 40 years ago, by Shirley Jones, and it has grown and grown and grown. We are a 501c3. We have contributed over $600,000 to our scholarships fund for area students in the arts. We put on three main stage shows each year that we can Obviously, with... uh, 2020 was quite a challenge. Yeah, obviously, with that, we weren't able to do our three shows for the last couple of years. But we're hoping we get going again in 2022 with our main stage shows. We also do cabaret singers. We do twig theater that we take out to area schools and churches, mainly for young people, although a lot of us older people enjoy it, too. We do our readers' theater. We have our radio shows on some kind of radio station. Some kind of little radio station little called. Little radio station. Called WSCQ Sun Radio. <laughs> Sun radio. And we've been doing that since uh, early in 2020. Mm-hmm. In fact, during that year, that really was the only creative thing we were doing. Well, in the interest of full disclosure, I should uh, say that I'm a Pelican player, a member of the tribe, and that was how I became involved with Pelican players was the radio theater. And Donna Fiore contacted me one day, the owner of Fiore's restaurant, and said, hey, how'd you like to be in Reader's Theater and be part of Pelican players? And I was like, count me in. There you go. Yeah, it's been great. No, Kim is phenomenal. She's a great actress. <laughs> she also, because of her radio performances, she also has been cast in Nana's Naughty Knickers, yeah. which keeps getting postponed. <laughs> People are like, it's cursed now. I'm like, no, no, don't no, say that. No, it's not cursed, but it was originally scheduled to go in April of 2020. And now it's set for October of 2022. Yeah, it'll happen. It will happen. But, you know, I wanted to have you as a guest on Connecting with Kim because we get so many new people in our community all the time. And I wanted them to understand what is Pelican Players? What do we do? How can you become a part of it? Because even though you're headquartered in Kings Point in Veterans Theater over there, which, by the way, is a fabulous facility and those dressing rooms are to die for, you are open armed to the entire community. And so I wanted everyone to understand the breadth and depth of what you do. Thank you. Yeah, we have a lot of misunderstanding out there. We are headquartered in Kings Point, as Kim just said. However, about 45% of our membership is outside of Kings Point, 55 in Kings Point. And so we reach out to the surrounding area I'm talking Waimama, Riverview, the Valencia Lakes area, which obviously is still Waimama, Apollo Beach, 
uh, down to Palmetto. So this whole surrounding area is where we draw from. It's loaded with people that like to go and have fun, and a lot of them are very, very creative. If you have any kind of wish, hope, in the back of your mind, dream (laughs) that, well, maybe I'd like to get up there on stage and try that sometime, please reach out to us. Look us up. Our website is pelicanplayersscc.org. And if you go on there, you'll see how to join. We are a membership. We have very steep dues. Oh, I know. They're so... $10 a year (laughs) uh, gets you into that. And actually, that membership dues actually goes into the membership kitty so that when we're having our few parties that we have each year, that's what pays for that instead of coming out of the scholarships fund. Well, and that is important work that you do. People don't understand that when you have the productions, regardless of if they're readers theater production or live stage performance, etc., that you are collecting donations. Sometimes you charge for the show. Sometimes it's a donation, and that money goes towards those scholarships. It does. And how many? You said six hundred thousand dollars. Yep, we've topped six hundred thousand in the forty years we've been doing this. So it's made a pretty good impact in that, but. I'm thinking about a particular person that's a member of Pelican Players that always wanted to get involved with theater, but never had. They moved here when they retired, and she came out and tried out for a Reader's Theater show, got cast in it. Since then, has been in, I think it's a half dozen of our main stage shows. She was the lead in uh, Steel Magnolias, tremendous actress never having done it before. A lot of our members actually use Reader's Theater Mm -hmm. and now Slash Radio Theater to get started to see, can they do it? Because with those, they don't have to memorize the script. There's no blocking moving around the stage. It's reading from a script and you're acting with your voice. So if you have that in your mind, give it a try. Come out and join us. If you're just joining me now and connecting with Kim, my guest in the chair is Mr. Rick Swenson, who is the president of Pelican Players here in Sun City Center. So you have an important year coming up. It's the 40th anniversary in 2022. Actually, the 40th anniversary was actually this year. Was it this year? It was because it started in 1981. Okay. But because of COVID, things kind of got moved. (laughs) Yeah, we originally were going to do our soiree for our members, celebrating the 40th year and kind of taking a trip down memory lane with the various shows we've done in the past. We were going to do that early in 2021, but everything got moved. So now that's actually early in 2022, which is Sorry for the confusion. The I guess 41st that's the first year. Yeah, but, but- Yep. But so, that's an important milestone and absolutely to celebrate. So let's go back to uh, if you want to get involved, because there's a lot that goes on in producing any kind of production at Pelican Players that's not necessarily where you're on stage. You need people for other positions. You have sound, you have lighting, you have makeup, you have people who are helping with costume. So why don't we talk a little bit about that, too? When you see a show. When you see a main stage, you can pretty much guarantee that there are probably two or three times as many people as you see on stage that are behind the scenes working, doing props, doing lights, as you said, opening the curtain, closing the curtain, the sound, the sound team with sound effects, etc. So there are many, many people that are involved with the production, not just those on stage. So, yeah, there are a lot of people that are involved that when you they first started talking about getting involved with theater, were like, I'm not going to go on stage. I don't want to do that. You don't have to. Right. There's all sorts of things that we need help with. We are all volunteers. Mm-hmm. And when you put on a production, it is many, many hours of rehearsals, tech rehearsals, trying it over and over and over again to make sure we're putting on a good quality production. You mentioned earlier, and I'll pick up on that, we do charge for our main stage shows. However, we do a lot of things to thank the community 
for their following us for all of these years. Mm -hmm. We do normally four to six readers theater shows a year that are free. Mm -hmm. Anyone can come and join us, whether they live in Kings Point or not, as we pointed out before. Right. We're blessed that Deputy Jeffrey Mary came to us earlier this year and said that he would love to see Pelican players put on a show to help him help the community. Absolutely. We did that mm-hmm. back in early November, mm-hmm. and we had over 800 people that evening. Wasn't that marvelous? It was absolutely well, I think we were marvelous. all blown away. Kim was <laughs> in the show. She was in Fool Me Once, which was the scam show. Right. I was so proud and happy to be in that show because I respect Jeff Mary's efforts to try to help and mitigate as much as possible the incessant scamming that goes on in our community. And so to bring that to 800 plus people uh, and try to alert them to how it starts, it starts so innocently and it just starts ballooning from there. I was so privileged to be in that production. Well, I have to share a little anecdote about that. When we had our first production meeting with Deputy Mary, Mm. We had picked out this show, Mm -hmm. Fool Me Once, which is basically uh, all about various scams that go on. We tweaked it Mm -hmm. so that it was more pertinent to Sun City Center Mm -hmm. area. We then picked out another show to do called The Speeding Ticket that was nothing but fun. It was hilarious. It did not have any kind of a social message. No, it was just hilarious. It just was fun. (laughs) Well, at that first production meeting... Deputy Mary was like, I I really like the script you have, Fool Me Once. I do not understand why you chose this one, the speeding ticket. It really doesn't have a message for the community like Fool Me Once does. And I said, that's exactly why we picked it. And he said, I don't understand. And I said, well, think about it. We've been locked down with COVID for this length of time. Right. Now we're starting to get out. It's nice that we're coming to see something that is good for the community to learn about the scams, but let's leave them with nothing but pure fun and entertainment and just have a nice laugh at the end of it. That was such a great idea. He loved it and said, you know, I've got the costume. I've got the police (laughs) uniform. I'd like to be in it. So Deputy Mary made his acting debut on our stage right in that there with second Pelican. show. Yeah, it was so great, wasn't it? I yep. mean, it was. I mean, we, everybody was just laughing hysterically at that show. It was, and you know what was really great is in the rehearsals for "Fool Me Once" or Henrietta's absolutely horrible day. You're on the stage, and you're not. It's just us and the director and the assistant director and sound people and whatnot. And we're not getting any feedback because we're all so busy concentrating on memorizing our lines and getting our blocking right and so on. And so forth. And I can tell you that when we stepped out on the stage that night to do the actual performance, that was an incredible boost to us to get that feedback from the audience, to have them laughing where we thought it was funny too, because sometimes during rehearsals, we, you know, we just laugh out loud because, you know, and to get that feedback and that energy that you get from the live audience. We were flawless that night. And I am absolutely convinced that it was because of all of that positive wonderful feedback we got from the audience. Well, in all of my years in theater, I've seen it over and over and over again, where a show is nearing performance time and you're like, oh my God, (laughs) is it going to work? Are we going to pull it off? And all of a sudden, opening night comes and there's that audience and there's that energy you just spoke of and what's bouncing back and forth between the actors and And the technicians and the audience, magic happens, and boom, it's fine. And that happened with Fool Me Once and the speeding ticket. It did, because I can tell you that we were all wondering, like, is this thing going to come off when it's Uh time for... And it did. And I'm convinced that that's the reason why. We all rose to the occasion, and we all got that feedback from the audience that's so important, and we just felt energized, and it just, everybody just came together and did what they had to do and knew what they had to do and did it, you know, so it was great. So we've talked about the live stage performances. We've talked about the cabaret singers. We've talked about the Reader's Theater. Have we missed anything that Pelican does that we want to cover? Well, I mentioned Twig Theater. Mm -hmm. That is kind of like fairy tales and such. Mm -hmm. 
more directed toward elementary right. type age. And we do take that. Again, that's a free one that we do that we take to area schools and such. We haven't done any since 2019, and we're ready to get back out there and start doing it again in 2022. So those are the the areas that we have. We- and, I'm sorry. And before we went on air, you were talking to me about the fact that some organizations and clubs and not whatnot have reached out to Pelican players. And yep, we do have early in 2022. From now until toward the end of March, we have six shows that we are taking to organizations. Rotary Club is one. We're doing a show at Fiore's Restaurant. Donna is a great member she is. Uh, of Pelican Players. We have St. Andrew's Church that we're going to bring it to. Uh, we're doing Murder Mysteries. We're doing a Cabaret Singer show. We're doing one of our Reader's Theater shows. James Williams, the vice president of uh, Pelican Players Board of Directors, has been writing feverishly. He's written a murder mystery. He wrote a uh, reader's theater uh, with his partner, Kevin Steinke. Mm-hmm. So we're doing a, more and more original works. We did back at Christmas and New Year's, It's Christmas, which again is an original work that James Williams wrote. So we're really excited about possibilities that we have coming up in the future. Oh, that's so exciting. And, you know, I've had the honor and privilege of working with both of those gentlemen, and it's been uh, just a joy. I have so much respect for their talent, and James is just a great guy. We're lucky to have him in Pelican Players. We are very fortunate. We're almost out of time, so uh, I think one other question I'd like to ask is, how many members do we have of Pelican Players? We, at this particular moment, have about 140 active members. We have in that group a lot that are, not a lot, I would say maybe 30 that are life members. Those are members that really have stepped up and have done so much to keep Pelican players going that we have given them the honor of not having them have to pay those huge $10 a year fees and they become <laughs> but like that's members. But still, that's still a wonderful recognition for them. That's you know? exactly and what I'm, it is. No, it's they a appreciate recognition. it. Yes. So we are uh, out of time, but let's just uh, let everybody know again, if they are interested in pursuing any opportunity with Pelican players, because it's open to everyone in the community. And when I say the community, I mean Sensity Center and all the surrounding communities. Tell them again where they need to go. Go to Pelican playerssc.org and you will see all sorts of things on there a donations button a shop where you can order t-shirts and such for pelican players and how to join pelican players you have a beautiful website i just want to throw that out there folks because i i visit it many times and it's a great website so that's all we have time for i want to thank my guest in the chair today mr rick swenson who is the president of pelican players thank you for joining connecting with kim Thank you. You're welcome. And that's all we have for today. So uh, stay tuned next week for another episode, bringing you great information all the time. And let me just say, uh, stay safe, stay happy, stay well, and be part of the community. Bye-bye. Join us at the same time next week when Kim Drogi will once again bring you important information to help you live your best life here in Sun City Center. You'll be informed and up to date when you spend some time connecting with Kim right here on your community radio station, Sun Radio, 96.3 FM and WSCQFM.com.